Hello folks, Andrew here from Media World and welcome to a brand new review. Uh, it's been a little while I know folks, um, I do apologise um, as explained in probably some of my past uh, previous videos I did. Uh, crazy stuff's happening going on, um, it's at a point now where it's nice and calm. Um, I've recently relocated to another house, um, as you can see I'm in a different room, I'm in a lot less little comfy couch. I'm going to hopefully put some film posts on the side of there. Um, yeah, really crazy couple of months. I'm really happy it's at a nice certain level now. And, you know, uh, it's good to do another video again for, for you folks. And I hope you guys uh, still enjoy my content. And thank you for all my subscribers that are still subscribed to me. And comment down below because it's always appreciated. I've got a lot of catching up to do. Um, but let's let you know, guys, folks, um, if you want to keep up, up to date with my latest films and stuff that I'm watching and I do written reviews, I do I use a site called Letterbox. please go in, uh, you know, follow me on there, please go and check it out, it's something that I use practically regularly, it's something that's easier to do than a video because I don't know if I have time to film it, edit it, put it together and do a skit or something with it, so, but it's nice to do a video now folks, and it's for a certain film that's come out today in the UK, which is the Fantastic Four Reboot. Yay! See, nobody cares. The film is directed by Josh Tank, who did Chronicle. The film stars Michael B. Jordan, uh, Miles Teller, and Kate Mara. The film has been released in the UK today. The storyline tells the origin of the Fantastic Four in this kind of a new star kind of reboot. Uh, Reed Richard in the start of the movie is a young boy that creates this kind of like device type machine that can basically transport someone to this planet to another planet called the Zero Zone or the Zero Planet, whatever it's called. Uh, another dimension that basically has resources, energies, and when they eventually go there and they create the machine, uh, they come back with uh, powers, and that's pretty much it without kind of giving away the plot, or that's pretty much is the plot, more or less. Um, the film has a lot of bad reviews, uh, critically, fan-wise. If you've seen the trailers, unfortunately, you've seen a good portion of the movie, and to be honest, there's a lot of stuff in the trailers that have been cut out, this film is a disaster in every way, shape or form, in terms of its production, in terms of the film that's presented in front of us. The fact that 20th Century Fox has been forcing advertisements, um, forcing this film down our throats uh, for the past couple of months or so now is a bad sign. They, do, they are basically, as another amazing Spider-Man 2 here folks, trying to sell you the film and basically taking your money and running for the hills. I mean, this film is an absolute disaster. Uh, Josh Tank um, and the people behind it, um, I don't know what the heck they were playing at. Uh, through kind of like different kind of rumors and different kind of sources, uh, there's a very specific video, I'm gonna put a link, link in the description below, folks, that explains in a lot more detail uh, that was actually going on between, uh, you know, the last, the last Fantastic Four films and the events of this film kind of thing, what was going on behind the scenes. Uh, Josh Tank, um, it did Chronicle, which is a very well done fan footage movie. I absolutely love it. Go, go in and watch it, folks. It's really well done. Um, he was signed to do Star Wars, uh, one of the spin offs. He got let go from that, which I'm pretty sure he got fired. Things that were going on during production during Fantastic Four. The director has gone ahead and made practically Chronicle 2 in the same kind of nasty, kind of gritty, dark style as that movie, and it doesn't work. Fantastic Four. Uh, in the comics at least, and, and any kind of source material, and even in the games I've managed to get them right, they are uh, much like the Spider-Man universe, they are kind of uh, fun, action-packed, kind of the first kind of Marvel kind of family, uh, you know, done by the Marvel you know universe in a sense, and I think the Marvel Studios, if they had the rights back to it, would have done it fantastically well, but this is another example of Trans Century Fox do not want to let go of their property practically. They have to make a movie in a certain amount of time or the rights go back to Marvel. And they've just done this movie so cheap, so easily and slapped it out there. This film is not gonna make its money back, folks. It's, there's no fun to be had in this movie. The characters in this movie are so unlikable. Uh, you don't care about them. This is due to a poor script, uh, lots of, um, uh, missed moments kind of thing. I'm gonna swear there's been cuts throughout the entire thing. There's reports of it basically he, uh, Josh Tang did a two hour version but it's cut down to an hour and a half. That's pretty bad folks for an origin story of a Fantastic Four movie. Character development and actually kind of rooting for them and liking them. Uh, Reed Richards character played by Miles Teller which is a gifted actor from Whiplash. Uh, I bought him as kind of Reed Richards but 
it didn't, you know, there wasn't enough for me to actually kind of root for him or uh, enough character arc for him to actually kind of take control of the team because he's meant to be the leader of the Fantastic Four group. There wasn't kind of an arc of him, like, you know, maybe he doesn't trust people. That could have been interesting to see bounce with the other characters. Uh, Johnny Storm's character, we don't even know who he is really. Uh, even Chris Evans did a better job within the 2004 version. At least in that film there was a character arc, there was a start, middle and end. He kind of learned his actions had consequences and he kind of progressed throughout that movie. It's pretty bad when a 2004 movie, an early 2000 movie or super movie, uh, does better than the 2015 version. That's when you know you screwed up. Uh, Susan Storm's character, absolutely forgettable, didn't care for a character at all. Um, uh, the Thing, um, uh, Ben Grimm, uh, I mean, completely forgotten, completely in the background. Um, you know, there's bits of the trailer that I remember more than I actually remember the name of the movie. And even when he's The Thing, it doesn't really give me a wow factor. He doesn't sell me on, like, oh, he's The Thing. They kind of say he's done a couple of missions here and there for the military. That's about it, folks. It doesn't have any of that. It doesn't have any kind of quirky, kind of funny moments. It's not a fun, entertaining film to really enjoy. I think it's quite a bleak kind of dark, gritty tone throughout the entire thing. There's even moments I'm thinking, Jesus, you know, this is for kids kind of thing. Uh, Victor Von Doom's character um, is absolutely a joke. He's a cardboard cut out uh, cartoon villain yet again. Doctor Doom is one of my favorite villains in the comic. You're always making him this one note kind of character that wants to destroy the world. You can do more than that. Look at Loki, look at some of these other villains uh, that, that have appeared in the Marvel Universe. Look at Magneto, silly and like, he just kind of like wants to destroy the world. Uh, for no absolute reason because, you know, the script tells me to and he looks terrible, he acts terrible and oh. the way they go about the actual finale is so terrible. My final verdict and rating for the actual movie is a 1.5 out of 5. Uh, the only reason I'm giving it this kind of rating is the fact that it had potential, folks. It actually had potential. The first 20 minutes was interesting. There were moments where I was like, uh, like, it could be good. I mean, you can see there was places, opportunities here. The, the fact that the production was an absolute mess. The third act was bad, really bad. Uh, it's not fun. It's not creative. It's a very kind of copy and paste, poor version of uh, Chronicle, which is a much better movie than this, obviously. The fact that the original uh, 2004, uh, Fantastic Four is a better movie than this. It's saying a lot, folks. This film is definitely one of the worst films of 2015. It's definitely going on the list for sure. Uh, I am never going to watch this film again. I would definitely recommend you do not watch this film, folks. Even if you're curious, even if you, you know, if you're going to watch it for free, fair enough. Do not support this film. Do not spend your money on this film. Go and watch Ant-Man again. Go and watch Mission Impossible 5. Two much superior movies than this. So that's been my thoughts and opinions on the Fantastic Four reboot. Uh, clearly Fox do not know what to do with this movie. Give it back to Marvel Studios. Give it back to the people that know what they're doing. Uh, what are your thoughts and opinions on this movie, folks? Did you like it? Uh, was it actually something salvageable? Did you get entertainment value out of it? I don't know. Uh, comment down below. What are your thoughts on the other movies as well? The previous two, uh, Rise of Silver Surfer and the, in the uh, 2004 version. Love to know your opinions, of course. And for the meantime, this has been Andrew from Media World Film Gaming TV. Sign out.